that morning when I walked into the dining room, I spoke. I said, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, what are we going to have for breakfast this morning? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. And I s looked at him. I said, what? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. I said, I never heard of it. The first time I went in, fixed the sandwich and put it on the tray and brought it back, that wasn't right. His father was sitting there, and he said, Mary, I'm going with you and help you, and let's see, maybe both of us can get it right. I said, okay. And uh, he said, let's toast the bread first. So we toast the bread and then spread the peanut butter on it and sliced the bananas and put on it and uh, put them into the skillet and kept turning them with the spatula and turn them till they got heated all the way through. Then I take them and cut them, put them on the platter and take them back to me. And he said, that's what I want, that's right. And then smile. The constant thing with Elvis was no change. He always stayed the same. He was this way, he stayed that way. He didn't like change. If he wanted them in the morning when he went and woke up, I would have to fix them. If he wanted them at 2 o'clock in the morning, I would have to still fix them for him. Whenever he get a taste for him, he'd call down, and that's what he wanted. Well, well yeah, I imagine that hope to make him heavy because he wanted them real rich. Because they had him on a strict diet one time. Had food coming in from uh, California for him. And... Uh, Sometimes he would eat it, and sometimes he wouldn't. He said that's the only thing he got any enjoyment out of, was eating. When he was in the hospital, he would call me to bring him in different foods. And one day he called me and told me, he says, Mary, say they have me on a diet, and I want you to slip me some hot dogs with kraut on them and slip them, wrap them up and slip them in to me and tell, tell them there was some clothes that you were bringing me up here. So I went on in with the bag in my hand and handed it to him, and he looked at me and smiled. He said, Mary, we can get by them, can't we? I said, yeah, we sure can. And he opened that bag up and went to working on them hot dogs. This is the house that Elvis bought for me. He bought it in 1974. And he came and picked the house out for me. And I liked it, and he liked it. So he said, well, Mary, this is your house, if you like it. I told him I loved it. It was really nice. What can we do now? He was just a sweet person. The last thing that was that cheeseburger, cheeseburgers. Uh, Saturday night, or Sunday night and Monday night, he didn't eat anything. I said, you're not going to eat anything for me before I go. He said, mm-mm, I ain't hungry. I just want to rest. And I said, well, okay then. Night, night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. He called me, may we? He said, well, okay, may we, I'll see you tomorrow. And that's the last time I seen him alive. That was five minutes to two in the morning. Elvis Presley died here about 3.30 this afternoon. He had been found in his bathroom, unconscious, was brought to the hospital by ambulance, and Elvis was declared dead at 3.30. Then one night I was sitting there about 1 o'clock, and uh, he came down the steps and stood right there beside of me. He said, Mary, I want to stay with you. And I told him, I said, well, you're welcome to stay in my house, Mr. Elvis. You know that. And I looked up at him, and he kind of smiled a little bit. And he vanished away. And I always...